Hello lovely people, I thought I would film a quick study video seeing as I have covered first year, second year and now third year on the resources that I use to get through the year and exams. Um, I'm actually in my early latent phase of labour so if I get any contractions I'll just um, be a bit quiet for a while but <laughs> I'll start with some books that I used. Throughout each year I use question banks which I think I mentioned before in my previous video. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> so for P year, I focused on using past medicine. So past medicine is a question bank that has questions from different specialties as well as medicine and surgery. And it was really useful for the end of T year and throughout the whole of P year. So I just did the entire question bank from start to finish. And I probably peaked a bit too early with it, to be honest. I reckon if I sat the exam at Christmas time, I probably would have done better than how I did in April. Not April, when was it? July. How I did in July. But uh, using these resources, I did the best that I've ever done in medical school exams. So I think that they were quite good in helping me get to where I got to. Uh, one more thing I should add before I get into the nitty gritty about the resources. Um, every year I've always spoken to people in the year above me. And I think doing that is invaluable because these people have sat the exams before, they know exactly what they're talking about and what's going to come up because they've done it already. And I don't think there's any problem with just asking them how they found the exam, what they saw came up and what key points you can focus on and hone in for your study as well. So with some breathlessness, I will now go into the different books I used. The Oxford Assess and Progress, so I don't know, if you're a medical school in the UK especially, you definitely will have come across the Oxford Handbook of Clinical Medicine, or I don't know how you've got this far without it. <laughs> but these are the question books that go alongside it. So there's one for medicine and one for surgery, and I'm actually using them this year in final year as well. So these two books were really good. Um, they're kind of more intense than past medicine. They're a lot more detailed and a lot harder, but I think they'll push you to get those top marks as well. So definitely have a look at those. This book was actually written by a medical student. It's called Mind Maps for Medical Students. So each page does what it says on the tin, it has a mind map. And it's really useful because it's succinct. And the lady that wrote it, Olivia Smith, she has one for specialties. So paediatrics, ophthalmology, obs and gynae, all in one book all the different specialties, so I use that alongside this, and this I'll definitely review again this year, in final year, so this was really, really useful, I thought, and I always scribble over books that I buy just because I like making notes and highlighting and things, I find it really helpful, so definitely get this. So another um, series is the Rapid Review series, um, I actually got this from a friend who left them here in Cyprus for me, which is really kind of her, and I found the paediatrics, obs and gynae, and neurology ones, really, really useful, and psych. Um, so they're really good for specialty and going over them. And as you can see, the pages, there's not that much on the page, so it's like a little disease lab or review for each condition. And this I found really, really useful. So my friends and I um, went on a set of revision courses called Ask Dr. Clark in the UK. Um, they're put on by the BMA. So if you've signed up to the BMA, then you'll get a notification about these courses that happen. Um, they cover medicine, surgery, paediatrics, and obs and gynae. And you get these course booklets with every course that you go to. I think they're about £50 each, each course. And it's a whole day, and it's really, really intense, but you cover everything that you need to know for the exam. So it's a really good review. And having this to go home with as well is really, really handy. So, um, yeah, my friend and I went on this course and loved it. She went to every single one, and um, I just did the obs and gynae one. But I would recommend going to all of them if you can. I just had a crazy year in P year, so things didn't work out. But, yeah, this was a really good course that I went on, and it just summarises everything really succinctly and clearly for you. And there's questions as well. And post-course notes that you can go over afterwards. So moving on to OSCEs. So for OSCEs, these, this was the thing I was most nervous about with coming back to medical school after my two years off, because OSCEs are something that I not struggle with, but confidence issues are there with me and OSCEs. Nerves get the better of me. And I think for this year, well, sorry, for last year, P year, 
that was the year where I had the least amount of nerves and did the best. And I think that these resources really, really helped and contributed to doing well. So um, I got this book just from eBay. I'd done some research and read that this was a good one. It's the unofficial guide to passing OSCEs. And it just goes through different examinations with diagrams and it goes through um, an explanation of different histories and what to hone in on and different um, signs and cues that the patients can give you. That was really useful and I highlighted all the main ones with these little stickers. The entire year, my friend and I went through this book, OSCE Cases with Mark Schemes, and we did like a couple histories a week and we did that for the entire year and that was really useful, I thought, to just get comfortable and let it roll off the tongue, like just asking these questions and it not be so stagnant when you're speaking and there'd be long pauses and it just gets more fluid. As well, being on placement helped with that too. So yeah, this was the main book that we used and it had the mark schemes and even chest x-rays and abdominal x-rays in the back, which you can get through, you can get used to talking through with your peers, people that won't judge you and will be nice and give you good feedback. So this book came at like two months, two or three months before our exam, our exam and everyone was rushing to buy it because this book is amazing. It's um, the OSCE revision guide for medical students and it's by the company OSCE Stop. So OSCE Stop, I use them in T year. They were an online resource at that time and T year is second year by the way. And I would just go online and print off the notes that they had and I know a lot of my other friends did that and use their history points and things but now they've made this book which just has everything in and is so clear and has even more than our handouts that we get from the university so you really can get top marks and good points from using this book and goes into a lot more detail as well which is really really handy and does things by disease so for example Parkinson's disease, cerebellar disease, like what you're looking out for. So I found this invaluable <clears throat> when it came to OSCEs last year and I know a lot of my friends bought, the, bought this book too. So that's a good one. And the last one, I think when you're in PE you need to have a good book that covers medicine as a whole. Um, may or may not include specialties but something that definitely focuses on medicine so that you can um, just have one resource that you can read over and over and go back to. So for me, that was this black book, which is massive. <laughs> and I'm trying to go through it again this year before exams, which are a few weeks away. <laughs> and it's called Succeeding in Your Medical School Finals. And I found this book really, really good. I know I'm saying that about all of them, but <laughs> this is the reason why I'm sharing it, the, the different resources that got me here in final year. There's no colours or pictures or anything like that. There's the odd ECG and whatever pertains to that chapter. Like for ENT, there's the ear and things like that, like diagrams that pertain to the specific chapter. But yeah, I found this book really good because it's again, disease lob style, a bit like the mind maps from, for medicine book. Um, and then they've got a set of questions after every chapter. So you just review your knowledge. I have a friend that used medicine in a minute. I'm not too familiar with that book, but she said that was really, really good. So my main point with this is that you should have one staple medicine book that you refer back to and use quite regularly for your studies. And I hope this has been helpful. I think I've managed to do this in less than 10 minutes, which is a record for me, but I probably am speaking very, very fast. So let me know if this has been helpful for you. Um, I've noticed that pregnancy videos seem to be a lot more interesting and popular than study videos, but there's only so much I can talk about with pregnancy. So <laughs> here is a study video and I hope it's useful for those planning to go to medical school or in medical school and trying to plan what books to buy because it can get expensive. Another tip is as well, if you're in the UK, if you sign up to BMA, join the BMA and pay three pounds a month, you get full access to their library and you can get books free for free sent to your house as a student and foundation doctor. So I do that and I found that really, really good and affordable. So I hope this has been useful and I will see you in the next one. Bye.